optical activity and the optical isomerism. Optical activity is the ability of a chiral substance to rotate the plane of the you know, plane polarized light. And this optical activity is measured using an instrument called the polarimeter. See, certain compounds, when you take a particular compound and you make a solution of it, we find that when you pass a light, a plane polarized light, through this compound, there are two options, two possibilities are there. One is the light will travel through the solution along its own path without any change or it may get bent either in the right direction or in the left direction. If a light passes through the solution without any change in its path, then we say the compound is optically inactive, right? We say the compound is optically inactive. But if the compound can rotate the light, the PPL light, when the light rotates either in the right direction or in the left direction, we say the compound is optically active, right? The compound is optically active. Here is also, if it you know can bend in the right direction or in the left direction, it is optically active. And if a compound rotates the light in the right direction, you can see it is a dextro. We use the term a dextro rotatory, dextro term. And if it can bend the light in the left direction, it is the levo rotatory. So for a compound to be optically active, what is the requirement? The requirement is it should be chiral. Only chiral substances can rotate the light, the PPL light, in the right direction or in the left direction. If it is an achiral molecule, then it will be optically inactive, right? So the optically inactive compounds are actually achiral, while as optically active compounds are chiral. This one is chiral and this one is also chiral. As I said, it can you know rotate the light in the right direction or in the left direction. So we use the different terminology. And the instrument that we use for measuring the optical activity is called as polarimeter. Let's have a look at the polarimeter. We have a source of light and the ordinary source of a light is unpolarized light because here, you know, it oscillates in all the planes. It's electric and the magnetic fields. They are actually oscillating in all the planes. And when you pass it through a polarizing, you know, filter now a plane polarized light oscillates only in one plane and when we use this you know ppl light normally we call it the plane polarized light right this is our pp uh, a light plane polarized light when you pass it through a solution which is optically active right if this compound see this is our solution this is a tube the sample tube that contains a solution of an optically active substance this optically active you know substance when you analyze it when you will observe it through the analyzer you'll see that you know there will be some rotation right angle of rotation will be there either it will be in the right direction or in the left direction correct it will be either here or it will be over here right these are the two possibilities and if this is an optical inactive compound then there will be no change there will be no rotation so angle of rotation will be zero that means the compound is optically inactive however optically com active compounds, they actually bend this light either in the right direction, right? Then it is called as a dextro and we use the term D for that compound or it can bend it in the left direction and we use the levo rotatory you know, term for that. So this is the L. Correct. So a compound which is optically active can either rotate this light in the right direction or in the left direction. So it's an optically active compound. And if it does not change, you know, if the plane polarized light, there is no change, there is no rotation of this light, correct? So angle of, you know, rotation, if it, there is zero, then we say the compound is optically inactive, right? 
for a compound to be optically active, what is the requirement? The requirement is that the molecule must be chiral, right? Only chiral molecules are optically active, right? These are optically active. While as achiral molecules are optically inactive, right? Achiral molecules are optically inactive. And we have learned in our a video, in our in our last video, what are chiral and achiral molecules, right? So I suggest to you to go over to that video and see what is the requirement for a molecule to be chiral. A quick revision for a molecule to be chiral, it should have a carbon atom attached with the four different groups, right? If we have a molecule where you have a chiral center, means we have a carbon atom in a molecule which is attached with the four different groups, you know, suppose A, B, C, D, right? All the groups are different, then this molecule will be chiral. If it, all the groups are same, it's achiral. If three are same, again achiral. If two, you know, uh, groups are same, again achiral. So therefore, for a molecule to be chiral, it should have four different groups attached. Let's take here an example. This is the chiral molecule because it has four different groups attached. The first molecule, right? So this will be chiral and this will be optically active also, right? This is optically active. Here we have a carbon, the four groups attached, similar, a chiral molecule and this is optically inactive, right? This is optically inactive compound. And this one again, it has two similar groups here. So again, it is inactive because it is a chiral. Here we have a chiral molecule because four sim you know, different groups attached. So this is chiral. That means this will be optically active compound. That means it will bend the light in the right direction or in the left direction. So this molecule here, if you look at it through the mirror, it will, its mirror image will be like this and these two compounds are non-superimposable so they are enantiomers. modes and we also learned what are enantiomers modes in our you know previous lesson right these two compounds are enantiomers. modes this is optically active compound and its mirror image like this this is also optically active compound now see these enantiomers modes have everything same the only difference is that they interact with the PPL light, plain polarized light differently. Means if this molecule is optically active and if it can, suppose if it can rotate the light in the uh, left direction, means it will be called as a levo rotatory. Suppose this is levo rotatory, then its mirror image will be dextro rotatory, right? It will bend the light in the opposite direction. Enantiomers have basically the opposite, you know, this optical activity. Right, I'll repeat it. In Anchimosa, opposite, you know, this uh, optical activity. Or if you know, suppose this molecule is dextro, then its enantiomer mirror image will be levo rotatory. Right, so enantiomers have opposite optical activity. Correct? So that means this molecule over here is optically active and its mirror image when you look at its mirror image here this is fluorine this is iodine right this is the iodine here and this is the bromine and this is the chlorine okay this is chiral this is also chiral and these two molecules they have these are enantiomers right these are enantiomers you know non superimposable mirror image you cannot superimpose them. Now these enantiomers have opposite optical activity. Means that if this molecule here is dextro, then this will be levo. Or if this is levo rotatory, then this will be called as dextro. So basically there is no correlation with the structure and the optical activity when it means whether it is dextro or levo. We cannot say, right? Nobody can say from the looking at the molecule whether it is dextro or levo rotatory. Because configuration and the optical activity there is no correlation you know direct correlation between them the only thing is we can say when you find a chiral center you can say it's optically active but whether it will you know rotate the light in the right direction or in the left direction we cannot say just by looking at the structure correct that's why i'm saying you know, if this molecule is dextro then its enantiomer will be levo or if this compound is levo rotatory then its enantiomer will be 
dextrose. This molecule is achiral, means it is optically inactive. This is also achiral, means it also it is optically inactive. This is chiral, means it is optically active, and its mirror image. When you draw its mirror image, here this is the CH3. Here we have a hydrogen, OCH3, and this is the CH2, CH3 over here. Now these two are enantiomers. Again, these two are enantiomers, non-superimposable mirror image. And both are, you know, optically active because there is a chiral center. Okay, this is optically active. And if suppose this is dextro, then its enantiomer will be levo. Or if this is levo retardatory, then this will be dextro retardatory. Correct? We also use a plus and the you know negative sign for the dextro positive and levo negative. Right? Levo we assign the negative term, negative sign. For the levo retardatory compound and plus sign for the dextro retardatory compound. As I said, there is no straightforward correlation between the sign of rotation, means whether it is dextro or levo, right? We cannot say there's no relation between the sign of the rotation and the structure of the particular enantiomer, right? So here, if this molecule, if it is a dextro, then this, this will be levo retardatory, or if this is levo retardatory, then this will be dextro retardatory. Hope you got the concept. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.